God, trimming for a camera is so annoying. All right. Yo, what's up, Noxat fam? Welcome back for another video. We're gonna be going through a more comprehensive brisket trim video. I haven't really done a full brisket cook on this channel in quite some time, so I definitely wanted to make sure I do that. And a lot of you have probably found this YouTube channel to begin with because of that first you know, trim video that I made a couple years back. The process in which I trim briskets is still pretty much the same. What I wanna do is talk about certain things that I've seen other people do or a lot of questions that I've been hearing over the last couple years. What I'm hoping for this video is that even though I'm talking about the same thing, I think the way that I explain it is a little bit different when I do consulting or when I'm training someone else how to trim a brisket or teaching them how to do it. You know, there's kind of new kind of language that I like to use that I feel like is a little bit easier to understand. So with all that being said, let's get started. But the very first thing I actually wanna talk about before we start getting into trimming the brisket is talking about knives that people are using nowadays. My favorite knife is still one of these six inch uh, curved bony knives. I've used these for so long now that I just feel really, really comfortable using it. Some people prefer that's just straight and not curved because they feel like it has a little more structure. Usually on the straight ones, the metal is a little bit thicker, so it feels a little bit sturdier. But I do like the curve because when you're taking up those layers of fat, it just feels a lot smoother. If you guys watch and follow a lot of barbecue people and they show their trimming process, you might have seen a lot of people starting to go into using the slicer. Not necessarily one like this one that has serrations on them, just straight and they might have like the dimples on the sides of the knife. I haven't tried it before because uh, I don't have that kind of knife but I do really like the concept of people using those like 10 to 12 inch uh, slicers because I think it helps really emphasize a certain point about how to think about trimming brisket because you have such a large length on the blade they tend to use more of the blade to kind of get those clean cuts that you're trying to do with your you know your boning knives and I feel like people who struggle with using these boning knives is because they feel a little bit claustrophobic. The blade is kind of short and they do more of a sawing action rather than using the entire length of the blade. So again, I don't really think that there is a right or wrong. It's just really what you feel comfortable with. If you do have, you know, both, I would give it a try and just kind of, again, you're just reminding yourself all the time that you're trying to use the full length of the blade to trim off all that fat. Luckily for me, I got these three briskets from Purely Meat Company and I know their stuff is great. Uh, so I knew that at least the stuff that I was starting off with it was gonna be kind of what I was looking for. Uh, looking for briskets that are roughly about 12 to 14 pound range. I really like the muscle structure of those kind of briskets when it's that size. Usually if they're too big, the mohawk and the deckle fat get lifted up sometimes if they get too heavy and it, it does kind of mess up the cook a little bit. Before we get started, let's set up our station. I'm gonna put down a damp towel. We wanna to make sure that our cutting board doesn't slip, especially when we're doing all this trimming. It's just so much safer to deal with a cutting board that's not gonna be moving while you're trying to rotate briskets and stuff like that on the board. Also, I would say one of the biggest things is getting a cutting board that is big enough. Uh, I feel like a lot of people have like smaller ones, briskets like hanging off the edge and, and also it's not very sturdy or it's kind of warped. So like it's rocking and wobbling. At that point, I would just say, if you got a little bit of money to spend, spend it on a nice cutting board. I've upgraded to this one maybe a year ago and I absolutely love it. Next, we wanna get ourselves a little bin on the side for all the trim. Also underneath here, I've got a trash can so I can get all the vacuum seal bag and toss it straight down there. This is not necessary, but I would recommend it, especially if you're starting off trimming, is a cutting glove. You guys are just starting off in barbecue and maybe aren't super comfortable using knives yet. Definitely invest in one of these. I bought this the first time after I did cut myself. <laughs> Here is our brisket. We got a prime brisket. I'll weigh it out later with the trim and kind of like the before and the after. I'm gonna go with my favorite uh, six inch boning knife. Our first kind of cut to open up this vacuum seal bag is gonna be where that heel fat is. Uh, we wanna hit that heel fat. We know that we're not gonna be damaging any meat underneath it. 
So for those of you guys who are new to this YouTube channel and new to kind of like lingo of the brisket itself. So uh, the way I'm gonna talk about it is like, this is the bottom of the brisket. This is the top. This area right here hangs, I call this the mohawk. Some people might call it the hump or something like that, but that's that portion that hangs off right there. And if we're talking about the heel fat, we're talking about this really, really large chunk of deckel fat. So I wanna start my cut where I'm getting like the base of that heel and I'm cutting it all the way down to this kind of little tail right here uh, where this deckel fat kind of runs all the way through. And the angle in which I'm going to take it is gonna be pretty aggressive. Roughly kind of like, like just slapping my knife down against the brisket and it already gives you a natural angle of how your knife should sit. That is the angle I'm taking to take this down. The other thing that you can also do if you're not comfortable with knowing where to cut, usually the duckel fat has kind of this ability to lift up right here. And you can kind of get your fingers underneath and create a kind of guide for you. So if I just kind of pull this, like it kind of gives you a natural idea of how much fat there is and how much that you need to take off. Because this is a little bit thicker, I'm gonna kind of pull a little bit. Over the years, there's been kind of like debate whether or not you just kind of take off that first surface layer or you can uh, dig it out. I just kind of do both depending on the situation. If I feel like I can dig it out without compromising the shape of the brisket, then I'll do so. That way you don't have all this extra fat that's hanging off when you're going to slice the brisket. Right here, I'm just gonna follow that same kind of line of that deckle fat. I'm gonna use kind of towards the base of my knife because it's a little bit thicker, so it has a little more structure, so I can kind of push through. This fat is great for making sausage because it is super, super dense. And anytime we're trimming the bottom of this brisket and we're gonna be trying to take off anything like this, we're gonna be going with the grain of the muscle. The reason why we're gonna go with the grain is because if you go against the grain, your knife is gonna to continue to catch on every single muscle fiber and you're gonna have spots that are kind of, it's gonna to start to fray a little bit and that's not what we want. We want it to be nice and smooth. And again, we're just, this one we're using it, we're using our knife and we're just kind of pushing it through and gliding it through. So again, with the grain, and we wanna make sure that our angle of our knife is pretty tight against the brisket because we don't want it to angle because if we angle it down, then we're gonna be cutting into the meat and we don't want that. And then once you kind of get this, you can kind of hold this down or lift it as you push with your knife forward. Go. You don't have to get super crazy with um, taking all this fat off in the bottom of the briskets. It's kind of chunky, you definitely want to do it, but um, you know, stuff like this, if you can lift it up, you probably want to take it off. But a lot of stuff, if as long as there's just a little bit, you don't have to stress about it too much. All right, great. So I feel really, really good about the bottom of this brisket. Uh, we got a lot of that that fat that we had today on top off and um, now we kind of have a nice smooth layer on top we didn't dig into it too much and yeah it looks like a really good even surface at this point we're gonna flip it over now we're gonna be taking off this mohawk or this hump same way that you did with that heel fat uh, we're gonna be taking a pretty aggressive angle to take off this right here. Still to this day, I get a lot of people who tell me that the way that I trim or how everyone trims nowadays is super aggressive. If you really, really wanna get the right doneness of a brisket when you go to barbecue restaurants in Texas, you kinda need to take this off. It doesn't really help too much by leaving it on. Um, there are other places that do leave it on and they are great at what they do. So they're better than me, all right? Uh, but just to get this to the shape and the look that we want it to, we're gonna take this off. The idea is we want want this brisket to kind of have a rounded shape. We want to kind of almost create a similar type of curve to it. And so we're taking not, uh, we're not taking an angle like this and cutting into the tilling. We want to take just this top layer off and have it at a certain angle to just take that mohawk off. So now this has a more uniform shape that we're talking about. And yes, this is all really great brisket. This is great for burgers, sausage as well. You can put this into stews or chilies or whatever. Don't throw this away. And just because we cut this off doesn't mean it's going to waste. 
Now we kind of have a general kind of shape of our brisket. The next thing that I like to do at this point is to round off any of these corners to give it the actual shape that we want. And then afterwards we can go on and take that top fat off. For those of you guys who watch all of Brad's videos, you see him do the scoop and the scoop is great. It's super clean and it works really, really well. If you're gonna do it, make sure you practice doing so. I've seen a lot of people do it and I did it too the first couple times I did it where I scooped too early and I cut off a huge portion of my lean. So the method that I like to use, it's ensure that you're getting the actual shape that you want is I call this like the cutting off corners method. This lean, it's a little bit too thin. So I wanna find the right thickness that I'm looking for. So if I generally wanna find the shape of my brisket, it's gonna be something like this. Uh, if you guys can see this kind of line that I drew in with my knife right there, that's what that's what I feel like I'm going for. If I know that all of this needs to kind of come off, and kind of work my way towards it, it's gonna seem really aggressive, but again, I'm gonna take off this entire corner because I know with that line that I drew, I'm not really getting close to that. So I'm gonna lop off this corner right here, and then it creates these two points. And now I'm gonna cut off that point, cut off that point. You can see there's those, all those little points. So as you kind of see it, you can lop it off and you get to slowly, slowly kind of create that new rounded edge uh, that we're looking for on like the same thing as you would do with the scoop. I'm not saying that this is better. I just find that it's a little bit more, it's a little bit safer um, if you're not super confident in uh, doing the uh, that scoop method. On this other side right here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna round off these corners and that looks really good. All right, so as you guys can see right now, our edge is really nice and clean. We don't have anything that's super thin. Like if we look at the thickness of our brisket kind of going all the way across, like it's pretty even. That's what we're looking for. This is the part where everyone gets a little bit nervous and that is talking about taking off the fat cap, worrying about scalping it or leaving too much fat on. This is just kind of my rule of thumb. I want a little bit extra fat on my lean. With my point, I want to take it down as much as I possibly can while still leaving fat on the top. In that thought process, if I scalp a little bit on the moist end, I'm not gonna worry about it. Because I'd rather trim it down far enough so that I know it's not super, super thick fat on top of a super marble piece of meat. It just gets, it gets a little bit too fatty for me. But that's not the same thing as you taking off all the fat on that moist end. I don't like when that happens because it makes the texture of the brisket at the end of the cook too dry in my opinion. You can also kind of see as you start to trim how thick that fat is. So we can be a little bit aggressive. And as I kind of poke at this fat, it's pretty firm. So um, I'm just gonna be aggressive with my first cut and just see how much fat we got. And that's a lot and that's okay. We just need to be able to see all that. With this rounded side of this brisket, I'm kind of going through and then I'm turning my knife. It's almost like when you're trying to take the skin off of an orange or the rind off of a watermelon, where you're just following the natural curve of the, of the piece of fruit, and in this case, the natural shape of the brisket. And we're just gonna keep going. And as I keep poking at it, it still feels pretty firm. Use all your senses to figure it out. You know, you don't, you don't always have to just guess. And as I kind of go through there, we're getting close to the meat and that's great. And I can feel this is just really, really thick. So again, when I feel like it's super thick, I can be okay with taking more like chunk, bigger, bigger strips of fat off. Okay. And you can always like look underneath the brisket to see how much fat there is also. So this is a, this is a pretty fatty brisket right here. When we're trying to take these longer strips, I always like start my knife at the base and just kind of use the entire length of the blade and just rock it back and forth. There's gonna be a little bit of, of a sawing motion, but you know, you wanna keep it from having these like super, super like short strokes like that. You're gonna end up just making a bunch of like random kind of divots on top of your brisket. Okay. Now we can see how thick that fat is. And again, if you can grab it, be aggressive with it.
now that we got to this point where it's taken up quite a bit of fat and it's not as firm as it was before it's a little bit softer one it has to do with the fact that um, you know talking about trimming a brisket it's sitting out here longer and there are lights out here which makes it even hotter but when it gets really smooth and you feel like you can't grab onto anything this is a trick that I actually learned from I, I'm pretty sure it was Leonard I think Leonard taught me this you're taking your your fingers and you're kind of like running them across the brisket like this and it kind of creates a little a lift right there of just fat and then from then on you can take your knife and take off this entire raised layer of fat my fingers where they're actually hitting that's kind of where the meat of the brisket is that's where the the flesh is but everything that's kind of lifted up right here is just fat so with that being said i'm just going to take that pick up that lift portion and boom take that off and now it's becomes more and more smooth as you go and again you can keep doing that same sort of test over and over again take your fingers create that little lift and then when you feel like you know, those kind of grooves that you kind of are making aren't as tall anymore that's how you know that um, you're pretty much there in terms of like getting close to the brisket being trimmed to the proper level of fat. Now, over here, yes, I scalped that, I don't really care, but this spot, you can see how the color of it is a little bit darker and that's because that meat is getting really, really close. This is kind of that, that look that I want uh, for my brisket. If I can, uh, in terms of at least the point, I want it to be really like a layer of fat but have it be a little bit more translucent because that just means we're getting close to um, close to the flesh. Okay, so a couple things that I just want to make sure I can check on. I just like to kind of pat all that fat down to make sure it's nice and even. I'm not missing anything. But on this back end right here, on this point, I don't like having this sharp of a point at the bottom because this is just going to burn. So similarly like we did with the fat over here, I'm going to round off this little corner to give it a nice, nice rounded point right here. As the heat kind of hits this brisket, it's not just going to get caught. It's going to roll off. Same thing with this little part right there. Round it off. And I'm just being a little nitpicky with this one, but this uh, edge that we took off earlier, it's kind of flat. Like there's this point. I don't like that point. So we're going to run this off right there. And there you go. All right, so let's check the bottom again. Bottom looks super, super clean. We got rid of that, that heel fat, so there's not that much that's gonna be sitting there. We got a really, really good shape. There's no corners that are going to be more burnt and stuff like that or get darker during the cook just because it's sticking out. You go on this side right here, we can see how round it is and how smooth it is. We can see the evenness of the thickness of the lean. And again, we got a little bit more fat on the top of the lean, which is what I was looking for. This part right here. So normally where you take off that mohawk on that side, that lean is where it's the thinnest. If you have briskets that curl, it's this corner right here that's curling up aggressively and creating that pooling. The reason why we want to make sure we take off that corner is because you don't allow it to curl up as aggressively. Will it still curl up? Maybe a little bit, but not as much as if we had that giant flap on there. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this trim. I got two more briskets and I'm going to just basically leave the camera on so that you guys can see this process two more times. We're gonna do our second brisket and I'm just gonna start a timer. I'm not trying to like go super fast or anything, but just to give you an idea of you know how long it usually takes me to trim a brisket. If you're trying to trim a brisket and it's taking you 20 minutes or so, you're uh, wasting time. Now, obviously it takes practice to get faster at it, but being able to move confidently will be able to get you to get briskets done better and it'll stay colder so your cuts will be a lot cleaner. But yeah, so let's, uh, it's already at 45 seconds already, but yeah, let's see how it goes.
Okay, that's pretty much it for this brisket. I think it's pretty good. Time on this one. All right, less than, I would say less than four minutes because again, we started the timer early. Everything again about this process is just about confidence and just doing it a bunch of times. We went through everything really, really quickly. Uh, on the second one, obviously this brisket is a lot smaller. You got a pretty good coverage of fat, but it's not super thick. Like this corner was actually really, really thick, but we turned that down. You got a really nice clean edge and yeah. It looks pretty good to me. And also one thing I would always make sure to say as you are trimming, I would have a towel next to you also. That way you can wipe your blade every now and then as it kind of cakes up with all this other stuff. All your cuts won't be as clean. Whoops, we're pretty good now. <laughs> I just scalped the shiz out of that brisket right there. And especially on the lean, ugh. I mean, not the best place for that to happen, but it happened and what can you do? Other than that, shape is pretty good. We got a nice fat coverage all the way through. It's just, ooh, ooh, that hurts. All right, guys, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed just being able to see that first, like really comprehensive version of a trim. And then also, you know, before we started that, just talking about the knives and the setup. Once you have all these things in place, like picking the right knife that you like, making sure you get a really good sturdy, cutting board and you're getting a really good high quality brisket, that's where we're really starting off our cook as best as we possibly can. Taking care of the trim is just gonna make the cook so much easier. And right now, if your trim isn't as good as you want it to be, it's fine. It took me a really, really long time to really figure out how to make this brisket look the way that I've seen so many other people's briskets look. It's with certain types of methods and steps that makes you feel a little more comfortable because you know that once I take off this, now I go to the next part and the next part and the next part. And once you start to practice those steps over and over and over again, uh, it just becomes a little bit more seamless and fluid. So when you have 10 briskets or 15, it's gonna take a lot of time, but like just from looking at a brisket, you can be like, okay, the mohawk is a little bit taller or that heel fat is a little bit thicker. So now in those kind of places, you kind of know like, all right, when I get to the next step, I have to be, I can be a little bit more aggressive with my cut. So that's the end of this video, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you press that bell notification so you know when the actual brisket cook video will be coming out. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.